Hello everyone. Welcome to the next session of this training. In this session, we will be discussing about data structure of ABAP stack in SAP system. That you in this session you will understand the impact when you are developing any uh, SAP system or when you are changing any SAP system what is the impact and what is the difference between different kind of changes this role we will study in this particular session also we will see uh, what what are all the different examples or what are all the different characteristics of an SAP ABAP systems okay so basically we will learn how also the fundamental uh, transport system works how a developer can develop this uh, develop an application in SAP system these are all the things what we will be learning in this particular session meaning to say there are quite different things like uh, uh, cross client customizing cust uh, client specific customizing this we talked little bit about before that let's say for example a user is uh, specific to client so it, it's it want, once you create a user in one client then it will not be available in other clients like this is client specific data okay this this kind of information also we will be learning it here so this is very very conceptual uh, understand this is this section is quite conceptual so it's very important that we need to understand this concept very clear to move further how we can set up the transport how we can do the development of the sap system is quite important even though Yes, as a SAP basis consultant, you will not be the person who is going to do the development. However, the changes which is going to happen in the SAP system that you need to aware of because this can have a huge impact on the application level as well as well as in the SAP systems. So that since it is quite important that we understand because you control the SAP entire SAP uh, landscape. So we in many of the landscapes what happens is basis will be the person who gives the final approval of any transport going to production so in that cases that we need to understand how this changes which is going to production is going to work okay first of all let us understand how does the abap stack works we seen before that we have different clients client 100 client 200 right now in our system ECC we are logging with the client 001 client 001 is the default client as I said this is a standard SAP system which we are using right now so it does not have any additional client if you go to a, a customer system or if you go to a different system which is used by some companies the so client 001 will not be used it's called we, we call this as a golden client which SAP delivers this 001 is copied to different clients like client 100 and client 200 you can see it here okay so right now we have seen what is application server uh, uh, central instance application instance uh, everything yeah now everything put together it's called ABAP stack one system one system is ECC that's what we seen our system is ECC it can have more than one application servers in the, uh, in the operating system level now we are talking about the inside SAP how it's going to work so we have something called clients what we seen we have we can create different clients so we like 001 from you can copy client uh, to the same data you can copy to 100 and you can copy again make client 200 how to make this copy that we will come to this again how we can copy this one this is a different set of things which we need to do so what this particular client have okay it has client specific customizing okay? client specific customizing and it has the application data and it has the user information like this you have several clients if you have add the next clients also if you see client specific customizing application data and user data then we have cross client customizing then we have repository objects what is cross client specific data for example your application data like 
your invoice which you are creating inside SAP it stays in one specific client so it's not available for the next client or an order or a service order or a quotation these are all application data which is created by the user who is going to use this SAP system these are all application data this is specific to each client so when you create a invoice in one client this will not be available in the other client so it is only specific to one specific client okay then we come to the users and authorization records so users and authorization master and all relevant information related to user is client specific as you've seen we have a user in our 001 client which is called SAP basis if using this client if I log into an another system or using this user if I log into an another client let's say client 100 after I create this specific user may not be there so you need to have user ID password specific authorizations everything for each client Okay, this is an, again client specific data then client specific customizing this is very important as an SAP system that once you have an SAP system you have to do some customizing okay SAP allows you to do even to do some development apart from the standard programs from SAP as you know SAP is mainly SAP is very famous for its own standardization of the total business process so if you make any business complex scenarios in your business scenario that is already available in SAP that you can accommodate SAP can accommodate any complex scenarios in the business so what do we do in this client specific customizing this we need to understand client specific customizing means it will not be done by you it will be done by the functional consultant for example we are going to set up a company in our SAP system so you need to create a company code so inside this company code how many sales office are going to be there how many plans are going to be there how many working locations going to be there so these kind of information like profit center cost center these are all specific units customizing objects which is available in our SAP so our S functional consultants going to do this customizing in the SAP system so these kind of customizing which is done the SAP system it is also client specific customizing so once you create a company code for example in client 100 the company code is 1000 then that company is not available in the next client okay so you can create one company here and you can create another company here then this these two clients will not have the data of these two specific so it's, it's like a logical separation here it's logically totally separated from two different clients this is called client specific customizing so as I said as a fresh SAP system the the customer have to do some customizing based on their business needs as like a company code plans profit center cost center there's quite a lot of customizing which will happen when you are doing an SAP installations okay, this will be done by uh, the functional consultant as a basis consultant we will also do some customizing kind of this authorizations uh, like creating the roles and stuff like this you know, as a you know, authorization is actually part of SAP authorization actually part of SAP basis however nowadays the authorization become quite sensitive topic as I said the security become quite sensitive topic so SAP have separate module as a BCA which is called BCA uh, in general basis is called BC okay basis will be called as BC and authorization we can call BCA so this also will be done by basis is also called customizing and these roles which you are creating also client specific okay so if you can create one role in one client and you can create a different role with a different authorization and different client okay, this is not linked each other then we come to cross client customizing what is cross client customizing there is some customizing settings 
Anyway, there is some customizing settings which is applicable to both clients. Something to do with our system related settings. Yeah? This is applicable to the both clients. For example, if the, the client itself, okay, the, the changes in the client itself, there you need to do some configuration the client yeah you need to create these clients and you can configure these clients how their client supposed to behave that is a cross client customizing okay cross client objects so and mainly if you see in the functional functional side if you see the cross client customizing is something like uh, holidays updating holiday calendar and you know, this kind of information so, yeah there is some customizing objects which is cross client customizing so if you do it in high 100 or 200 doesn't matter but it will ref reflect across all the clients okay that is cross client customizing customizing means it is not development is not creating programs customizing means you have an option which is SAP is given that to create a company code is a option which SAP is given so you can use that one and you can create this company code Okay, this will be done especially the there is an uh, transaction code which is called SPRO which gives you the, all the options about how to do customizing okay you can do customizing there then we have cross client customizing then we come to repository object repository object means the main mm, main core of the, the SAP systems where you have all the table definitions, programs, transaction, function modules, screens, these are all called repository objects. That means this is one repository which is applicable to all clients. So for example, let's take a program. The program sits in the repository objects. This program can be executed from this client also. This can, can be executed from other client. Creating an invoice is a program. As we seen before, SAP have pro mainly programs and tables. So, if you run a transaction code VA01 to create an invoice, so VA01 going to call a program. This program also can be executed from client 100. It also can be executed from client 200. Okay, but the program is same. So, it will sit in the repository. It can be executed by any client. So in the repository, you have a lot of things. You have technology that is our basis, basis stuffs. Like uh, there are quite a lot of basis activity which you, which will be staying there, like creating your jobs and uh, we have a lot of programs which you need to run. Like a actual SAP system is based on technology, for example. Then you have FI, financial, finance, and we have CO. CO means controlling. Then HR, PP production planning, MM, material management, SD, like this you have quite a lot of, lot of modules which in SAP which sits in the repository. Meaning to say the, the module itself creating a company code is, will be done by one of the one of our uh, FICO consultant for example. Okay, So the company code when you are creating the company code itself is a client specific data. However, you have programs related to FI, for example, uh, for example, uh, account receivable and account payable. You have a lot of programs which you want to run. That are all going to sit in repository as an FI related program. That's what it means. So, like this, you have quite a lot of different different modules. Yeah, these are all not the only modules which is available in SAP. You have quite different modules that all this program will sit in the repository not only the programs the table so if let's say if i change a program in an sap system that will going to affect all the clients okay so you have a standard program to create an you have a program to create a uh, invoice for example you wanted to change this program so if you make any changes in this program, it is going to affect the entire SAP system. It's not only going to affect one specific client. Even though the developer who is going to change the program will log into one specific client and do the changes, it's going to affect all the clients. Okay, That is the difference here. That is the point here we need to understand. You may be logging into one specific client to develop this program, but it's going to affect all the clients. So all these repository objects, 
or cross client changes okay and not only uh, programs you have for example table okay the table also it can you know, whenever you make a change in the table structure table means you you can have a table structure and you can have the data so when you do a customizing here when you do a customizing here okay this is basically a table entry you can you can imagine like a table entry but when you make a change in the table itself the change which you are going to make in the table is going to affect the entire sap system let's say for example the company code for example company code is saved in a table called t001 okay that is a table name in sap to save the company code whenever you create a company code it goes and saves in this specific table okay so the the t001 you create one company code like 1000 in client 100 and the go to client 200 and you will create a company code called 2000 so in the t001 will have one more field which is called client okay then it will identify each client what kind of company codes you have okay so in the if let's say i am going to modify this table t001 add an additional field normally this will have uh, company code name description city uh, what is the currency you are using quite a lot of informations so for some reason you decided i want to have one more field there when you are creating a company so you decided to add this uh, field into the table t001 so as soon as you add this one this change will be affected in client 100 and 200 and i mean across the sap system okay this is quite important uh, even though i said the an example of uh, changing the uh, table of t001 generally we never do that i never seen t001 just an example for you to understand uh, but you if you really want to do that it is still possible to do Uh, same like that like uh, our uh, the standard program yeah to create an invoice uh, we don't we never never change this programs however sap allows you to do an in house development let's say in, in a typical scenario whatever the customer requires in sap system is already available in the sap system if let's assume some report some activity you do not have in the sap standard functionalities and you like to develop your own functionality on top of sap what they are offering to you so sap allow you to develop the programs and it also allow you to create tables new tables you can create function modules and you can you can even create transaction codes everything is possible sap allow you to do that so using and these also will be saved in your repository because this is all cross client informations because this are all repository objects you can create your own program your own report your own tables it's still possible so the the difference here is that what sap does is if you are working in sap you can see there is some transaction which starts with z or y that means these two are developed by the customer or some bigger customer you can also um, create a namespace in sap you can register saying that okay if i start with this particular name slash uh, mak that means for for one specific company that is my company then if i say if i if you start everything with mak that slash mak slash then something then all belongs to you Okay, you can register with sap so reject whenever this particular program goes to anywhere or sap finds this this particular program in any sap customers then they know this particular program was developed by this this client however if you don't want to have this uh, name specific names there is some charges uh, uh, there are some charges for this based on your contract if you don't want to have this you can also create an is and why you can do a in house development on top of what is available in standard sap standard sap means for example in the sales order creation we don't do much 
you have a lot of things to do but you can also create kind of uh, additional add on top of it some validations you want to have and you can do th these kind of things okay so the main point here is what is client specific data and what is cross client customizing data what is a repository object okay this is three different things which is quite important and this repository objects let's say now we have FICOHR like this these repository objects will have programs def uh, definition table definitions transaction code function modules so these are all together it will be put together and it's called as a package okay it's uh, like like a FI package what role tables related to FI will be an FI package that means what are all the what are all the objects what are all the repository objects which is related to FI can be put together and created can form a package okay and kind of different packages there may be also possible that some uh, some pack packages some objects which is cross modules yeah not not only used by FI but it will also used by PP or MM stuff like this okay so this this all objects together put as a group which will be called as one package okay now let's have a look into a three system landscape what is mean by three system landscape this is a typical scenario of SAP system why do we need three system landscape it's a quite interesting uh, question in, in a general scenario recom SAP recommends that you need to have three different systems meaning to say you have one development system one quality system one production system the production system is the one which will be used by the users for your business purpose which you can call it PRD as a JID is just basically a naming convention some some of the customer actually use this naming convention as it is DEV, QAS and PRD like this three different SAP systems some customers some they do what they do is they will say D then their own name and Q then their own name P and their own name then two letter they will use it for their own names then you can identify this development system quality system and productive system and this again up to you how do you want to uh, uh, how do you want want to name this systems so why do we need three different systems it's it is it is for sure that SAP requires maintenance quite often okay not quite often even though if you use the standard SAP you need to do some kind of changes in the SAP on time to time because of the security reasons or as well as some improvement reasons whatever the reasons it could be that you will be doing some changes in the SAP system time to time and nowadays and it's quite important that SAP releases security nodes quite often so that the these security nodes needs to be implemented as soon as they detect some security bridge they issue this security nodes and this needs to be implemented these changes needs to be done uh, for a security reasons it's quite advisable that to do these changes okay so what do we do in the development system in the development system we do the actual development of the SAP system let's say doing the customizing or doing the uh, doing the you can see here customizing uh, you doing the customizing or developing a new program or doing some changes will be done in the development systems so once this this customizing you will develop in the development system then you will create something called a package it's kind of package it's a transport package so you create a transport package then you will send it to a quality system whereas you will have some data kind of production data where you can test the customizing what you have done in the development system in the quality system okay where you will do the testing once you test and confirm everything is working fine then you will transport to production by doing this what we will achieve that production system the system PRD will never been affected by the change what you are doing that is the objective 
of course you can do changes in the production system directly you can also do develop programs but this will be never this will never been recommended by SAP or nobody will do that because you cannot do trial and error method changes in the productive system so the productive system is always closed for any changes you will do all the changes in development and put in the quality then you will check whether the customizing or the workbench change or the program what you created is working fine everything is working fine then we will transport it to productive system then you may ask why can't we test in the development system itself okay that will be a very good question uh, however you can test in the development system it's possible but if you have some programs which you are presently working on okay then you don't know what changes you have done if once we go a little farther then you will understand this quite you know, quite more clear so what in what happens in the development system let's assume that you are doing a program okay you are creating a program this program this is something called uh, that you are the only person who is doing this one once you finish this program and you you assume okay everything is fine you can also do a small test in the in your development system you think everything is fine then you will send this changes to your quality system which will have its own versions and it it its own uh, which will have its own version of this particular program which will go to the quality the quality system you will have more data in the development normally we don't keep quite a lot of data however the development system will have more clients for example you have one client for customizing one client for testing okay and one client for sandbox sandbox means uh, it's kind of a playground where you can where if you have some solutions if you wanted to play around you wanted to find some information then we will use the sandbox client generally what happens is when when a customer re requesting for some solutions we don't know whether this solution is going to work or not we want to test it before you are going to tell the customer it's going to work so if you want to test it you need to do the customizing here and put it in the quality to do the testing that will be quite difficult to do that instead of that you can do the uh, customizing in your sandbox system sandbox client and check the solution whether it's going to work so once you see okay the general what we will do is in the sandbox system you will have little bit of test data where you can test your solutions and you are allowed to create the test data in the sandbox systems okay then you also have some test systems where you test client where you can also use it for other user to test it the, this is our development system so once this is done then you will use create the package and transport it in the quality system the quality system generally what happens is uh, it it will have quite a lot of data in in a bigger landscapes the quality system will be refreshed from that means it will be copied from your productive system uh, once in a while maybe once in a year or once in every six months again depends on the customer and they will copy it in the quality system so that the quality system will have quite a lot of data then you may think okay well, so you have we are replicating the same data in two different system it's actually not we copy this one and uh, most of the companies if there is some quite sensitive data they will erase or they will they will scramble the data in the quality system like for example hr data so it's quite sensitive so what they do is what they copy into quality system the hr data will be erased erased in the sense your salary information all this thing is quite sensitive they will make everything zero or some random values or something like this then then though no sensitive data is there so the basic idea behind that is you have some data which is a valid data where you can test your changes in the actual scenario okay, that is the idea behind that okay but you may think okay why don't we test this one one more client we can create one more client and test it here the problem here in development system when you are testing let's assume you are testing a program of course whenever you do any changes you want to test you need to run a program the same time when you run the program there's somebody else in the same system and a different client is trying to change this program then you cannot run it you cannot use that program because this program is locked for development so it's it's quite difficult to 
do the testing in all scenarios in development so that's the reason we will do it in quality system this is this is the recommended landscape so you don't think only three system is uh, available in all this all the uh, customers even some customers will have five system landscape you may think what is five system landscape five system landscape means you will have one system which is called sandbox system in the front then you will get development system quality system and product system the sandbox system you can do whatever you want you will like creating program edit the program or stuff like this so that the actual program when you are changing is not going to be not going to be affected so in the sandbox system you can modify the program and test it so if you do it in development system your actual program will lose the control what you are going to change so you can do this program change uh, that means the repository changes in the sandbox system to test here in our development system you cannot play around with the program or any repository objects you can you can only do customizing in the sandbox system to test something okay you can play around only in the sandbox system only for customizing you cannot play around with the programs or the tables and stuff like this if you want to do like that if you do like that here this is going to affect your entire development systems okay so the development system always should be consistent with your productive system otherwise you're going to have quite huge impact when you are doing any changes later so you cannot do that one here so that's the reason some customers will have another one system here which is called sandbox system that will add up as a four system landscape now what is five system landscape five system landscape means there will be one more system here in between in quality there will something they will call it a pre production system this pre production system what happens is it's a copy of production system every quite often but there is no testing is done this will be mainly used by technical people and the project managers to check to simulate the actual impact on the productive system when you are doing any big changes in the systems okay, in the quality system anyway you do a lot of changes you keep transporting back and forth let's say back and forth in the sense let's say you have a program you develop in the development system then put it back put it into quality system it's not working then you go back and do another change and put it back here so you keep back and do back and forth quite many times so the product but it's still not going to production there will quite a lot of changes will happen here so the production environment quality environment may not be same so if you want to see before putting into production then you need to have a pre production where you can simulate what is going to be actually happen in the productive system it's quite sensitive if you see the uh, quite larger companies they they expect sap system up and running 99 percentage now more than 99 but there is many customers which which in the you know, many customers especially in oil industries or um, uh, especially in oil industries they they are quite big and they expect the system is running 99.9 percentage or 99.5 percentage like this so you cannot afford to make any errors in the productive system that's the reason we have different landscape and make sure the quality is fine when you reach us to production it does not have any impact okay that is about system landscape so whenever you transfer your change your customizing change or your workbench change one system to another system you will create a package which is called a transport okay which is called a transport request we call it in technical terms tr okay transport request the transport request will be created from development system then it will be transported to different system okay we will have quality checks and stuff like this we will see how does the transport system also works in this particular session so now let us have a look into what is transport request and how does this transport request works if you see here we have a project manager let's assume that we we are implementing an sap project then you have a project manager and under this project manager you have a lot of people who is going to do some changes in sap either it can be a customizing change or workbench change then each customizing change or each workbench change what you are going to do will be transported will be packaged into a package which is called transport request this particular transport request will have its own unique naming convention 
using this naming convention you can identify this specific transport and your object which you are going to change will be added into this specific transport request okay here inside the transport request you will have task okay you will have number of task you can if you see in this uh, in this picture here you have one transport request under that you have task this is called request and this has task and this will have almost the same numbers this will have uh, some running numbers you can create different task okay each task can be assigned to different people okay for example here if you see we have tr tr means transport request tr1 2 and 3 okay three different transport request if you see the tr1 this is the only developer who is going to use this transport request 1 and if you see in the transport request 2 which have only one task the transport request 2 you have two tasks the task one task is anyway used by this particular developer and the second task is used by this developer and the transport request 3 you have an individual developer who is working on it so only one transport request this person is working which has only one task so meaning to say you have transport request and this particular transport request can have more than one task so what is the project manager does the project manager overall looks into this transport request and who will do what specific jobs and we can assign the task to different 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 users okay. this is in theory but if you see in practical scenario this may not be the case and you, everybody will be creating their own trs but the basic underlying technology behind that is that you can have one tr under that you can have different tasks okay let's say for example if you go to our system Let's log into our system. So if you want to view the specific transport request, you have many transaction codes. Let's see first transaction code is E09. If you enter, this transaction code is called transport organizer. Here you can see customizing request, workbench request, and you can also see modifiable or release. So first of all, let's see what is customizing request. Customizing request is the transport request which have all the customizing changes. Now we know what is customizing change. Okay. So the transport request which has all the customizing changes is called customizing request. Next one is what is workbench request. Workbench request means the changes which is related to repository. It's called workbench request. So it, if meaning to say for example if you create a company code or if you create a profit center or if you change the profit center this will be a customizing request because this is pertaining to one specific client wherever the change is go going to be imported and the workbench request is mean basically like if you create a program or if you modify a program that will be one workbench request okay workbench transport request Okay, we are talking about request mean transport request the so this particular transport request will have workbench changes some program which is going to affect affect the entire sap system across the uh, clients okay so we have workbench request and customizing request now you can ask whether can we have workbench and customizing in one TR yes it is possible but generally we don't do that because it's very easy to identify if you have different workbench requests and customizing requests then you can identify this and to do a quality check it's quite easy that is also our project managers job project managers what they do is they will check the quality of the um, changes what you have done before you are releasing to yeah, uh, to the quality or before you're releasing to the productive systems so 
that so generally we separate the workbench and uh, customizing changes in different TR so it's very easy to identify and you also have different two other things it's called transport of copies and relocations in the transport of copies what we do is if let's say you have so many TRs in the in the project you have so many TRs which you have created you wanted to put everything in together in one 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 TR then you can create a transport of request so modifiable and release means let's say you we have seen the TRs right with the the TRs so when you are doing any changes in the TR that means that time it is modifiable it is not released to the next system uh, release means this this you finish all the changes then your project manager goes and release this particular TR to the next stage they go to quality or go to production go to quality system for going to the quality system that's called release so once it's released after that you cannot be it cannot be modified okay so let's let's go to the system again and see our user SAP basis have anything let's check all work workbench customizing do they have anything if you can search what are all the TRs which is presently assigned to you or presently you are working or whether it's modifiable release whatever this is we selected all now okay now here we have one TR which is 18 which is a which is created by SAP basis test it's a customizing task you can see inside this particular TR ECC K900018 you have this is the TR number inside that you have a task yeah ECC ECC K90019 is a customizing task okay this particular task you have something called role which is a which is generally the role which will be created by uh, basis admin as well to assign to users okay this is created created and assigned to this specific task so then the, if, if you see this tick mark that means this is this particular TR is already released okay and once uh, once you release all the tasks inside the TR then only you can release that the main TR yeah, main package okay if you if you double click here and you can see you can see the detail of each trans transport request what is inside okay you can see this is a customizing request because it's a role and you can see the objects inside what are all the objects you have you have some the entries what is the what which says that what is the TR number what is the package from where it was created and date and all these things and you have role which is this is a role name and we have table of we have a table content one table entry from this specific table these are all the objects which is available here then these are all the properties when it was created who created and you can also have documentation for this particular TR you can if, if let's say you create make any changes in the in the role or in the product on the on the program or in the role so you want to document what did you want what did you changed so then you can document it here so if you document it here it's quite easy when you are trying to fix some issues and you found a TR okay after some time it's not working then you go back and see what did I changed then if you are doing quite a lot of changes and so many developers are working then you will lose the controls so if you have this documentation then you can go back and check what was changed in this particular TR that's the reason we have documentation inside SAP okay, this is about the TRs and here also we will have quite different uh, different methods how do we the TR will be released the TR will have a quality check and stuff like this and then we will have a protocol how do the TR will be released and you can also control the TR creation and releasing everything using authorization objects yeah. we will come to that authorization objects and all these things later sections we can control by authorizations like only project manager or the team man lead should release this particular TR we can give them the specific authorizations now let's have a look closer look into what is workbench request so when we went to SC03 we have seen what is workbench request we have seen what workbench request workbench request means the repository objects whatever you are going to do in a repository objects these are called workbench re uh, 
request so when you do a change in the workbench what you will do is you will create a request okay then you will create an object okay this object will be created by the developer developer means a web programmer a web developer and you will create the object and he will assign that he will assign one package to this object okay so meaning to say if you see in our repository every programs or tables everything we said we need to be put in collection and put it as a package then we need to identify this package is namely uh, named under your applications yeah or let's say it can be an fi or bc the standard packages available in sap also you can also create your own package names and you can assign it into the specific objects which you are creating okay you need to have a package then that will be assigned to a request okay then once you create the objects everything is fine then you will close this development okay that means let's assume okay you have created a program it's fine it's done now this is a, this all thing is done by the developer meaning creating a request will be done by maybe a project lead or or a development project lead and then we close this one then he will close this one then he will release the task once the release the task then it will come to development project then the development project lead will release the request the task once this is development is closed the particular task which is assigned to this developer will be released by the developer that means we have seen inside that you can have multiple task the task one task which is which is this developer is having will be released so in when all the task inside this particular tr is released then the development lead will release the tr itself the entire transport request will be released then once you release the entire transport request what happens is the the objects uh, all the content of this particular transport request will be exported or will be created as a package as a raw file in the sap system in the operating system and that raw file will be copied or will be exported to a transport directory we will come to that how to set up this transport landscape and all this thing it's a one of our basis task and basis topic in general we are now seeing how this going to work we are trying to understand we are trying to understand how it's going to work okay once you release this task release this request that it will create a file of this particular transport request what we have created and it will be exported to the transport directory in the operating system as a raw file so if you see here you can see a lock when this particular developer doing any changes in the package when he is doing any development in the particular object this will be locked by this developer and nobody else can change it meaning to say you are creating a program so you are the only person who can develop this program or who can change this program till you complete this particular task up till you release this task okay or till you complete this task and release this particular transport request till then this will be locked for other users for development okay this is very important this is possible only in workbench and this is possible in workbench request the reason is that if you don't do that one if you don't lock then you will lose the control over the whole entire program because if we as a developer i am the developer let's assume i'm doing some changes in this program and some another developer and sitting in a different floor or different offices and also trying to change the same program then the entire program logic will go wrong which is which is incorrect maybe because i have not completed the whole changes in the uh, program which i am trying to do now okay once i finish all my changes once it's everything is fine then my program will be added to this uh, tr then the tr will be released by my project lead or the project manager once the tr is released then the then it, the actually this objects it will create a version for example for the program it will create a version 
so the version we know this is the version i work then the other person other developer can come in and can start doing this one until unless i release the request he cannot do any changes so it is locked okay that is workbench request so next let's have a look into customizing request so what happens in the customizing request it's almost same like uh, our workbench request however in the customizing request you do not have locking mechanism and you don't also assign any packages here because you have you this packages is also this packages are assigned in the object level okay not in the customizing level customizing basically it will create some table entries yeah as i said the given example like table t001 if you go to our system if you go to table se to browse the table you go to se16 and table t001 if you go here you can see here company code company name city and currency everything yeah let me select some of the objects some of the field now if i this is the table yeah which let's see if it have any entries yes it has some 36 entries you can see the company code okay and these are all the entries uh, when, whenever you create a new company code this will create one entry here okay you can see here client 001 this is only for this client and you cannot view the company code or different client or information from a different client okay so it's it's very well restricted within sap itself okay you can see there's a lot of companies here so this is the one when you are creating using uh, we generally what we do we go to a transaction called spro that v means uh, i mean the functional consultant they go to this transaction spro where they will do all the customizing here also you can create projects yeah you can create a projects and this project can have different releases but it's uh, very rare we will do the project management create projects here but still it's possible if you are doing uh, running different projects in the same time multiple projects then this will be a better way to do then in this particular uh, particular uh, transaction you can do all the customizing let's say if you have uh, cost element accounting you can do quite a lot of lot of customizing here let's say create cost element or create company code or like this you have all the customizing is presently available here okay so you can create it from here this is to maintain controlling area with this we will do the customizing using SPRO this is generally not done by basis consultant I'm trying to show you how the system works in the scenario this is also same like the workbench request however the main difference here is that you don't assign a uh, package here and also this object is not locked in basis side we will also do some customizing in case of creating roles and this also never been locked the TR which we have seen in our system also one of the TR when we created the role the test role here we now let's have a look into how does the transport system works okay if if you see here we seen we have three system landscape we have uh, development quality and productions yeah so once we did some changes in the repository object or some customizing object we create this TR this TR will be released, the released by the team lead or the project manager or if it is a small systems, small landscape then the developer itself will release this TRs. So it depends on what process you are following. So once you release that particular TR, there will be a file which will be created. That's what we see in here, this transport directory. Yeah? It will export this file 
to a transport directory. This directory is an operating system in USR SAP. We can see in our system. If you go to our your SAP system, you go to our home drive USR SAP, then you can see a trans USR SAP trans. This is a transport directory. Okay. Here it will create it will create two files under these two core files and data files. We will come to this later sessions. This will create these files here. Okay. So that particular file, that particular directory can be read by all the systems. Okay, the quality and the production systems. Once the TR is released from here, it goes and sits here as a as a uh, as a operating system files. One after that, that TR can be imported using TMS. There is a program which is called TMS, Transport Management System. Using the Transport Management System, you can import the changes into your quality system. The next step is quality system. Yeah. So once you can import these changes, that is that particular object, whichever in this file will be imported here. Then you will test it. Once it is tested, everything is fine. Then you will again import it into the productive systems. Once everything is fine, then you will import to productive systems. Here you can also have some approval steps here. It is possible. We will see that how to do that later sessions. Here it says stops do only manual transport, meaning to say general typical scenario what we will do is uh, once it is released, it will automatically import into quality system because you really do not need to check the quality there because when you are releasing time itself, your uh, lead is going to check the quality of what is being done, then it is released, then it will be automatically imported. You you can do manual import also, you can schedule it automatically also. Yeah. So automatically imported here, once it's done, well then you will manually import to productive systems. That's the way the transport landscape works. Maybe we will create some TRs in our system, then it's quite easy to understand. Okay, let's let's create one one customizing change. Let's say PFCG. PFCG is the transaction PFCG is the transaction code which is used for creating roles. This roles will be assigned to user for specific authorizations. Yeah. Let's say is it create user is a role name. So I'll give a description create user role. We have a separate session again if you go to security course then this these sections are very well explained there how to create uh, roles and how to manage this one. Here we are just doing it for demo purpose. Okay. Then we assign one transaction here. This will assign quite a lot of objects here. So here we have some some objects. Let's see. The detail of how this users and all this thing works, we have a separate course for SAP security. Here we try to demonstrate how does the customizing works. Okay, if you see here in this in this in this particular screen, you can see a screen uh, icon, a truck. Yeah, this is for transporting. If you select this, and it will create a transport automatically. message about the roles, how it needs to be transported. It says you can also custom internal, you can use SE 10 to display. Okay, here you will uh, the previous screen it will ask you if you have existing transports you can select one request then you can add it to the existing request otherwise you can create a new transport request. Okay. Let's say in our case we said just simply said here that means create a new request. I'm going to create a new request. Mm, test 
dr for roles save ok so as soon as you save that you can see this is a customizing request it's automatically created a customizing request so it knows that the one which we are doing is a customizing change ok so any changes generally what you do in the customizing or workbench you will automatically prompt you to create the uh, TR however some of these like roles and all this thing you have to manually request for a new TR say ok now it will create a TR ok so warning ok now your TR is created you can see the TR this is a TR number and this is the content which is inside so now if you go to SE 10 the transaction code which we have seen before SE 10 the organizer if you go here if you, you to, uh, take this one only modifiable Our, this one you customize request from this user and say display and you can see this is the modifiable this, this, this is the content here so first what we need to do is first need to release this TR so you can also add additional task here ok so first you need to release this TR let's say without releasing this TR you cannot release this one if you say release this one it says not yet released there's a reference task which is not at release so we need to release this one first now this particular the task to 21 has been released from the request 20 okay now once all the task inside this particular tr is been released then you can release this tr now once you release this TR it says some TP command is getting executed it has to actually create the TR in the in the operating system however right now we did not fully configure the whole entire TR landscape transporter system landscape that's the reason right now you cannot see this one now we will come back to this topic how to set up that one because we keep the system fresh to start the setup so once once you release this one then you can see the tick mark now it is released okay now let's say if i go to now if i go to the pfcg again if you see this is the role which we have created now we can display it yeah this is a role which we have created now let if i go to a different client for example if i go to client 000 this also a default client 000 if I use our user ID and password let's say you don't have the user so let me we never use this one let me use the standard user there is two user which will be created by SAP in when you installing an SAP system that is first one is Sapstar another one is DDIC ok this is two standard users which will be created by SAP one is Sapstar another one is DDIC so I will log in with Sapstar now if I go to PFCG if I put the role here in search now if I, if I see does not exist ok this exists only in the client 001 in client 00 it is not there because this is a customizing change ok ok maybe we can create one program then you can see the difference let's go to SE38 this is to create programs here we will create a program Z hello 02 
Oui. Every customizing program which you are creating is supposed to start with Z or Y, otherwise it will not allow you to do, it is not legal. When I say create, we need to give a title, test hello world. You can specify what this particular program has, it is an executable program for example, what is the status of this one? Let's say it's a test program. And you can also sp specify what is the application, whether it belongs to FI, CO, or basis. Let's say basis. Say save. Now it will ask you to select the package. Okay. So you can specify if you select here. You can you can see all the packages, all the packages, present packages which is available. Okay, different different packages each package you can select it from here otherwise if I say local object it will it will create as a local object whereas it this this particular program cannot be transported okay that's that's a meaning of local object okay? if you want to transport it then you need to create it you need to select one of the package specific package then you can transport it right now we are not going to transport we just wanted to see how does it works here we will write a comment and then flash hey hello welcome to basis training this okay now we just some displaying some message save this one and activate it okay now this is our program so if I want to execute this program I'll simply execute it here you can see there's a message say hello world okay this is a program which we have created now if you go to client 000 if I log in again came out substar if you go to SC thirty eight display see the program which we created in client 001 is available in client 000. Here also you can execute. Okay, This is a very very simple example just to show you what is cross client and what is client specific customizing changes. Okay, Let's go back to our presentation. This also you can put it in a uh, transport request and since we selected is a local object we cannot transport otherwise as soon as you create a program it will ask you to if you select a different object it will ask you to create a transport request by its own yeah this is again depends on the uh, client settings how we can set the clients we will come to that again uh, we this uh, interesting topics we have a lot of interesting topics still we are initial preparation to understand how these transports and objects and all is going to work yeah let's go back to our presentation Okay, with this we are coming to the end of the session. Thank you very much for listening. I will see you in the next session. Bye-bye.